everyone, Linda here. Today we're going to have a look at the username and password not accepted error coming from Google's SMTP server. Several years ago, I wrote a simple script for a client which allowed them to send emails on behalf of a no reply user on their workspace account. As you might know, because the client is using a workspace account, we could have configured domain-wide delegation and used a service account. This would have allowed the client to use the Gmail API instead of the SMTP server. In this instance, we're going to use the SMTP server. This will allow you to use any Gmail account. It doesn't have to be a workspace domain account. Here I have a simple example of how to use the SMTP server. This code is very similar to what the client is running. I have a to email address, a from email address, the password to the sender's Google account. We create a MIME message and then we send the email. Now watch what happens when I run this code. There we go. There's our error. Apparently, it's not accepting the username and password anymore. But why not? May 30th, 2022, Google removed the less secure app setting from our Google accounts. By enabling less secure apps, it allowed us to use our login and password in the SMTP server in this manner. With that gone, it no longer works. So with the less secure app setting now gone, what is the alternative? Are we going to have to use the Gmail API? Well, the answer is yes and no. You could switch over to using the Gmail API, but there is a workaround for using the SMTP server, and that is called an app's password. So what is an app's password exactly? We use app's passwords when we have applications that need our password in order to log into our Google account, but we also have two-factor enabled on our Google account. So if you have two-factor enabled, you can set up an app's password and use that in the place of your standard Google password. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an app's password in our Google account. Remember, you have to have two-factor enabled. There's no way around it. If you can't enable two-factor on the account, then you're gonna to have to go through the Gmail API. You're not gonna be able to use the SMTP server anymore. Setting up the app's password itself is relatively easy. You select the app type of mail, and then I like to select the device type of other so that I can add a custom name in there so that I will remember it in the future. Now all we have to do is copy the app's password. We can place this in our code in place of the user's actual password. Once an app's password has been configured, it is there forever or until you delete it. So it won't stop working for any reason. Okay. Let's make some quick changes to this code. I'm going to update the app's password. I'm going to change the variable name just because future us really would like to know that this is an app's password and not a real password. Just a quick note here. I'm using JetBrains Rider and the shortcut key to automatically apply the change to the variable name throughout the file is Alt-Enter. Okay, let's run this code and see what happens. Well, it looks like it was sent. Let's go check my email account. There it is. We got our email, so we fixed the error. I know this example was in C-sharp, but I have tested this same idea using PHP, Python, and Java. So it should work. Just replace the password that you're currently using your code with an app's password, and you should all be set. Well, I guess that's it for now. I hope this helped you, 
And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd love to have you as part of the community.